So you want to make your first Blender short film. Cool, let's do this. Lights, camera, action. Now before you undertake that huge challenge, let me help you out with that middle bit, the camera. More often than not, beginners just jump in head first, which is usually a pretty good thing most of the time. However, if you don't know anything about the CG camera or basic cinematography, you could be shooting yourself in the foot or while you're jumping in head first, which now that I say it out loud, sounds like a pretty cool idea for a film. Directing the camera from CG Cookie will teach you all the essential things you need to know about your camera when dealing with your 3D scene. We'll cover the basics. Field of view. Lenses. Apertures, depth of field, focus, framing, and camera rigs. The different type of camera shots, as well as camera angles. And of course, the different camera moves. And we will even create some fun examples. And a few special types of camera moves. You'll learn all the basic rules you need to know. All this will give you a better understanding of the do's and don'ts of cinematography and teach you how to handle your camera like a pro. So before you jump in, do yourself a favour. Learn how to not shoot yourself in the foot, which is a pretty cool idea for a film. Hi there, my name is Wayne Dixon and thanks for joining me in this course called Directing the Camera. So what is this course about and what isn't it about? Well, first of all, putting together your own short film, which is probably something that you want to do, is a really, really big mammoth task. And there's many different steps and many different areas. So rather than create a course that goes into minimal depth about each one of those steps, I'm narrowing down the focus in this course and we're going to go into depth about one of those things that you need to know about, which is the camera. So that's what this course is all about. Everything you need to know about the camera for when you're putting together your own short film. We'll look at some stuff from uh, still photography as well as cinematography. You'll learn the real physics on how cameras actually work uh, and, and the differences between the software version and the real world. Some of it is the same, some of it you don't need to worry about, and some of it is just cool to know. This is all to hopefully help you make better decisions when you're actually going ahead and making your own short films. So I hope you enjoy this course as much as I have enjoyed putting it together. So thanks for joining me. One of the great things about a 3D scene is you're not limited by the physical reality. Almost anything is possible and we can move our camera anywhere. However, this is one of the problems. Because we're not limited by the physical reality, it's really easy to move your camera in an unbelievable way. But if you know a little bit about how things are done in the real world, it's really going to help your project look better. So before you start your animated project, let's learn some of the basics about camera moves. Here's a model of a camera. If it's unrestrained, we have what's called six degrees of freedom. That is, it can move, or I'll use the term translate, on its three axes, and it can also rotate on those same three axes. That gives us six degrees of freedom, which is also called six degrees of motion. Now each one of these moves has a technical name. If you translate your camera forward and backwards, that is called a dolly. Side to side is called a truck. Up and down is called a pedestal. If you rotate to the left and the right, that is called a pan. If you rotate up and down, that is called a tilt. And if you rotate from the side, that is called a roll. So that's our six degrees of movement. Dolly, truck, pedestal, pan, tilt, roll. Now that you know the technical names, you can actually start using them and sound like a professional rather than what you used to call each one of these moves. Now let's talk about some of the different types of mounts a camera can be attached to. A mount will restrict all or some of the camera's actual movements. Now the first mount is no mount at all. This is handheld, where the camera is held by a person, giving it all those six degrees of motion. And it's often intentionally shaky, which is something quite hard to do in 3D, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later on in the course. Now probably the most common mount would be a tripod and that restricts most of the movement and it just allows the camera to pan or tilt. Everything else is generally locked off. And getting more fancy, we have a dolly camera, also known as a dolly rig or a dolly. This is often put on a track so that we can get smooth movement as uh, people push the camera along the track. Yes, people do push it manually, but it doesn't have to go on a track. It can actually just go on the ground as well. 
One of the coolest mounts would probably be the Steadicam, which you can see here is held by one of the CG Cookie creators, Jonathan Williamson. It's actually not Jonathan, but it looks a lot like him. Now, Steadicam actually just smooths out the movement, so the person is free to run around and, and point the camera wherever, but it just does its best to stabilize the view. Here is a shot of a crane or a boom rig. This is where the camera is mounted on the end of the, the crane, so it can get some height. These generally move in a nice arc. And of course, cameras can actually be mounted to many different things that I haven't mentioned here, like drones, helicopters, to get aerial shots. On this guy on, on a Segway, you can mount them to people or a helmet, or even cars or vehicles. You've probably seen dash cams. Some people actually get creative out there by putting a, a camera on a skateboard or this tripod rollerblade contraption thing here. It's not possible for me to explain all the different types of mount, and that's not the main point of what I want to explain in this video. What I want you to do is anytime that you need to move your camera in a 3D project, I want you to think about what it's actually mounted on and how that thing is going to move. If you do that, you are going to get a much better result than just trying to animate it in the scene without thinking about it. Now there's two more things I want to talk about, and that is zoom and focus, which aren't technically moves, although they could be, but they are camera techniques. Firstly, the rack focus. That is where we change the focus of the camera to draw the viewer's eye to something that we want them to pay attention to. That is a rack focus. And then we have a zoom. Now zooming is where the camera stays still and the focal length changes to zoom in or out on the shot. We'll go more into focal length and what it is later on. But the most famous type of zoom is the dolly zoom, which is also called a Hitchcock zoom. This is where we move the camera and we zoom at the same time. I'll show you how to do this later on the course. So look forward to that. One other type of zoom is the crash zoom, which is often used in comedy or action when it's a, it's a really fast paced zoom to accentuate a certain point. Okay, so that's enough for this lesson for the moment. But before we finish up, I'd like to give you some homework. You're gonna like this homework. What I want you to do is watch a movie, a film, a TV, or whatever. And all I want you to do is look for a shot or a scene where the camera is moving, pause it, and then think about how that was physically done. Noticing these camera moves and trying to think about how they did them in the real world is really gonna help you make those in 3D. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson.